Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Before today's podcast starts, I just wanted to tell you that Donna is on the show and I decided to make this a two-parter. She had so much information about how to declutter, how to clean, how to organize. She has a book but I think she told me almost everything that was in the book, like no gatekeeping here. So I'm so excited for you to hear the episode. And I decided I'm going to do it in two parts. So um, stay tuned. I'll play one episode about 30 minutes long. And then the other half will be at the end of the week. Thanks, guys. Bye. If you're um, starting to declutter, and here's where people go wrong. They start to declutter and they go, I don't know, maybe to their desk. And they start with papers. And I will tell you now, do not start with papers. There's a trick to not letting papers happen in your house to begin with. But if you're starting with a pile of papers, don't. Because you need to build up your decision-making muscles to get to that pile of papers. And chances are, there's emotional things in that pile of papers that you're going to get flooded with emotion. It's not going to be good emotion. And you're going to um, get derailed. Because when you get flooded, you just can't go on. So we always tell, I always tell people, start with rooms and things that have very little emotion attached, like your bathroom. Chances are you're not going to have something that your mother, you know, handed down for generations in your bathroom. And, and so it's not going to bring up any feelings of, you know, family and heirlooms and nostalgia, you know, nostalgia in your bathroom, right? Chances are there's going to be a lot of garbage you can throw away. There's going to be a lot of things that you tried, you used, and it's never going to happen. You feel bad that you spent all this money on this expensive shampoo, but it didn't work. You might as well trash it. I mean, yeah. otherwise you're going to sit there looking at it every time you open the cabinet and think, damn, I shouldn't have spent all that money on this expensive shampoo. And you're going to feel bad. There's a there's a negative uh, emotion attached to that. Mm-hmm. So you might as well just cut your losses and throw it away so you don't have to feel it. Because if you just shove it into the back of the cabinet, now there's no room in that cabinet to put the stuff that you do want. And so it's going to be a hassle to get out all of your nice things that you've bought that do work and you want to make it easy to do your hair and whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you want to keep a, like a tote of all your hair things, appliances and uh, spritzes and the this and that in your bathroom. And if all this other junk is cluttering it up and you put it to the back because you didn't want to see it, but you felt bad about throwing it away, then you don't have efficiency in the morning when you go to do your hair to begin with. Now you're going to be aggravated in the morning. And so whatever aggravates you the most, that's the biggest motivation. Like I say, I have a lot of expressions. Done is better than perfect. (laughs) Aggravation is more motivation. You don't want to be aggravated first thing in the morning and you go to the bathroom, into your bathroom the first thing in the morning. Right. So if there's stuff there that's happened, like you can't open the drawer because it's, you know, there's something stuck in that drawer and you see all this clutter all over the, um, the counters and all of that kind of stuff, you're like, you know, defeated before you even start the day. Yeah. It takes up a so, lot of mental space yeah, too because it weighs on you. Mm-hmm. You don't realize it until it's gone and you feel what it's like otherwise. It's like you don't realize how unhealthy you feel when you're heavy until you lose some weight and then you're like, whoa. I mean, And so it's hard to describe to somebody. You can't describe to somebody how it feels to be in love until they're in love. You know right, what I mean? Right. But, but that's what you're heading for. That's what you want because mm-hmm. it's an amazing feeling and you don't want your friends, your family, your kids, your spice, your spice, that's a pearl of spouses. That's awesome. Anyway, you don't want them to feel bad because you know how it feels. So, right. so you want to make it as easy as possible. If you live as as um with ease right i keep saying easy as possible when you live with ease and you just sort of go with the flow and you and the and the energy is flowing it just feels different and it's a better way to live 
and nobody should be ashamed of at all of anything which you know unless you killed somebody uh, and unfortunately <laughs> the people who kill people aren't ashamed <laughs> you know what I mean the people who should be ashamed aren't the people who uh, do feel shame shouldn't right and so I'm all about mental health and um and it's really important to just to do everything you can and what I call it a um a help to develop a healthy habit of uh, decluttering and organizing um, as a form of self-care for your mental health, just like exercising is self-care for your physical health. And um, and just like exercising, it's not a one and done. You don't declutter your house and that's the end of life. Mm -hmm. no, something you do every day, all the right, time. Right, right. And you make time for it like you make time for exercising. Um, and if you don't, this is the Jewish mother, go <laughs> exercise. <laughs> um, because because when you get to be my age it's not an option anymore <laughs> I have, I, I have um, osteoporosis I just found out oh. and um, so I have to go do my weight training which I was doing what I thought was a luxury you know because it was fun and it felt good now mm -hmm. it's a necessity so for your mental health and your physical health um, you know exercising as well as decluttering and organizing just because for your physical health, when you know where things are that you need to go bike riding and you don't have to like spend all day looking for them because everything is mishmash and you have knee pads and, and, and helmets from when your kids were kids and the 35 years old now, right. you know what I mean? Yep. It's like saying you can't find yours <laughs> and, um, you know, or whatever it is, or your or the exercise equipment, or whatever it is that, that you've got, um, when things are decluttered and organized, you can just spend the time doing the things that you want to do, that make you happy, that are healthy for you, that are good for you. If you want to know if you should throw something else out, think about, is this good for my mental health to keep? And if it's not, what do you need it for? I tell people, you're not the president. You don't have a presidential library. You don't have to keep everything you ever had, did, earned, you know, uh, wrote, whatever it is. You don't need it, right? So, right. you know, if you're still holding on to all the back and forth between um, uh, child support documents, right? And all the, that happens. I, I didn't have that, but I know people did because mm -hmm. I organized them. And their kids are grown up and they still have all this child support documents. And so they don't want to look in the in the in the file cabinets. You don't know why you don't want to look, but then <laughs> unconsciously you realize it's because there's stuff in there that's just gonna make you so angry, you don't want to deal with it. Right. But then you have all the papers that deal with your life now sitting out because there's no room in the file drawers. So that pile also makes you angry because <laughs> it's cluttering up my house. It's sitting on my yeah. on the kitchen counters and I can't cut my salads, right? So, right. So this is why it's really, really important. And why I tell people deal with the papers last because you start with small decisions and inconsequential decisions. Your bathroom, you declutter. Your kitchen, you declutter, right? Then you get to things like the family room. There's less to worry about in the family room maybe to declutter mm -hmm. kids toys. It's not yours. It's easy to do, right? Anything that's not yours is so much easier to do. Right. Yeah, that's true. But don't, but don't do it without your kids. Do not do anything with their room or their um, play playroom or toys or whatever without them. They will hate you for the rest of their lives. <laughs> they will never forgive. I'm telling you, people are like my age. They have never forgiven their parents for throwing away, you know, um, yes. baby first step or whatever right. it was. That they had. <laughs> you know? and, um, I'm dating myself again. That was my, that was my toy that I got when I was three, baby first step. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, but that's the thing. It's like you do the things that, that don't matter. And then you do the, the other things. And the things that you think that you're going to need, that you might need or whatever, or that you think are valuable, people don't want to throw anyway. Oh, this is worth some money. Find out. I mean, in my book, I, I have all kinds of ways that you can actually get things appraised. You know, Oh, um, that's wonderful. Like, and find out um, how much things are actually worth. Because you might be thinking this is going to be something. And then it's, you know, not nothing. I don't know, $8. <laughs> It's $8 and it's been in the storage unit that's now been, 
you know, um, you've been paying $60 a month on for five years. Seriously, right. nothing yeah. in that storage unit is worth that. You know, not even an antique. Seriously. And if it doesn't fit in your house, is it ever? Sell it. Let somebody right. else enjoy it. And It's and costing you money. So, you know, what's the point? People don't have like, or there's people that do, but the next generation coming up, they don't have the big hutches, you know, they right. have the China and the collectibles and all the things people don't really collect. That's oh, what I mean. Can't, like, you can't even give them away. Although this week I've been seeing on Pinterest, on, on my Facebook feed, everybody's like pinning these, the same things. Um, people are repurposing them, but be realistic. Are you ever going to repurpose it? No. Right. So, so put you know, your best friend is a buy nothing group or something on Facebook or um, or something local. Like I'm in a, in a free giveaway free kind of uh, group on Facebook that's local. It's become a community now, really. Mm -hmm. um, and we not only list things and people come to your house, but we have swaps. We call them free swaps um, every month, at least where you bring all your crap. And they bring all their crap and you go crap. with each other's crap. We call it a crap exchange. Um, really, it's One new. man's junk is another exactly. man's treasure. And, exactly. But the point is, um, you know, it spread the joy. It's like, if you love it, but you really have no space and it doesn't fit your life now, give it to somebody else who will really love it. And it's, it's amazing feeling also when they come get it from you and they like, can't believe you're giving it away and they're thrilled. Yeah. You know? And it's like, it makes me feel very good that, you know, and the things that you think somebody can use, if you think somebody can use it, put it listed on your free group or whatever, put it out on the curb, you know, you'll know yeah. what people can use or not. And if they don't pick it up, then it becomes garbage. Right. You know? But when you're decluttering, the first thing to ask is, is this useful to somebody? Meaning, is it in a condition that somebody can use it? If it's torn or dirty or broken or obsolete or whatever, whatever, that's nothing. That's trash. And you put it in a trash bag. But then you say, is it, but is, if it is useful to somebody, the next thing you say is, is it useful to me? If it's useful to me, you keep it. If it's useful to somebody, but not necessarily me, I don't need it. That's when you donate it. And you don't make decisions. You know, people have these four boxes. They, everybody knows, you know, keep, donate, sell. Yeah. First of all, you don't put things you're going to keep in a box. You put them in the laundry basket so you can take them wherever they're going and you put them away. Okay. Keep a laundry basket just for decluttering and tidying up. That's what I tell people. It's the magic laundry basket. Whenever you're in a room, you have a laundry basket with you. That not for clothes. It's just for this purpose. Anything that doesn't belong in that room when you're tidying up, goes in the laundry basket. Then you go to the next room and you put things away that are in that laundry basket that belong in that room. And you take everything that doesn't belong in that room and you put it back in the laundry basket and you make your rounds. Mm. And that's how you tidy up. But if it's something you're keeping, don't put it in a box because you're going to do something with it pretty quickly. Right. Which is find a place and put it away. If, if you're not keeping it, that goes in a box. Unless it's trash, in which case it goes in a trash bag and goes straight out to the trash. And if it's in a donate box, it doesn't stay in your hallway. Or your forever, car trunk. Where you're going to, yeah. <laughs> well, take it to the car, take it to the car <laughs> trunk and then go to the free swap or go to the donation center or whatever. I always have um, uh, a tub in my car now for donations. I always have a car, uh, uh, a tub in a uh, but little box or something, whatever, it looks pretty in the house for donations, you know, and I put bags of things in there. And then I take that out every day and put it into the donate into my car. And then it either goes to the donation place or it gets put out because uh, I've listed it and somebody's coming to get it from my house or it goes uh, to the free swap when I go. Um, a free swap is just like a garage sale, but it doesn't cost right. you anything. You right. Just bring it up and they, um, but you get it out of your house. You just don't declutter and then keep the stuff there because chances are somebody's going to come around. They're going to look at that thing and they're going to go, why is this here? What's that? And they're going to put it back. And you're like, oh. That's so, so true. When you make the decision to take it out, you take it out. It's also a good way to get people to uh, 
your you know small family members um, to uh, pick up around the house because you tell them, look, if you don't put it away, I guess you don't need it. And if you don't need it, might as well go to donation. Oh. And it's going to be in there in the donation box until you take it out to your car. Right. And you know, so they have a chance to do something with it. And you'll find out a lot of kids don't even care about it. You know, mm -hmm. but if you tell them to go declutter, they 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 won't find a single thing to to give away. <laughs> but if it comes time to putting it away, then they then there's a whole lot they don't care about. Here's another tip. Just while we're talking about that, um, I have all kinds of tips. If no, going, you do that. They're fantastic. If you're going to have your kids, um, if you, the best time to declutter kids' rooms and toys and things like that is when there's a birthday or a Christmas or Hanukkah, if you do gifts or whatever mm -hmm. gift giving thing there is, you know, an influx of stuff's coming in. That's the best time to declutter. And you tell the kids this way, look, if I have something in my hand, I can't get something else. My hand's not open to get something else unless I drop what's in my hand, unless I let go of what's in my hand. So if you want something new, you're going to have to let go of something that you already have, right? So you give that them works physical. for adults too. <laughs> yeah, you give them a physical, and that's what I call keeping crap equilibrium, right? Every time you bring something new into the house, you got to have something exit. And the best time to declutter is when you've bought something new. Say you're out at you know uh, Bed Bath. Well, Bed Bath and Beyond doesn't count, doesn't carry anymore. But okay, say you're online and you buy something, Amazon, Bed Bath and Beyond, whatever it is, and um, and you find this uh, tablecloth, blanket, whatever it is, something beautiful you love. This is great. Well, you love it, it be, and you love it better than whatever you have. Otherwise, you wouldn't be buying it, right? Or looking, yeah. It now, it's now become, become your favorite. So that's the one you're going to want. So whatever's in the back of that cabinet, when you go to put it away, the towels, the, 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 the whatever, eh, tablecloths, the blankets, you know, those backups become the backups of the backups. And then it's like, they're never going to get used and yeah. would, would, because I like this one. Mm -hmm. That's when you declutter. So you don't have to do a whole house declutter all at the same time. Like take the next six months and I'm doing it. It would be nice, um, you know, to do that, but you don't have to wait until you have this huge chunk of time. Okay. I'm going to do the garage now. Okay. I'm <laughs> going to do the kitchen. now. You know, one cabinet, one drawer, you know, one thing at a time at a time when you're actually in there mm -hmm. is the best time. So uh, so when you're putting away your laundry, okay, whatever's in the laundry is the stuff people are actually wearing. Whatever's still in the drawer and in the cabinets uh, and in the closet and whatever on the shelves, they're not wearing those. Those are the first things you look at for decluttering because they're not wearing them. Right. And when you get those off the shelf, there's all kinds of room for the new laundry to be put, I mean, for the fresh laundry to be put away. And then people can actually put them away. They don't have to like, it's not a production to put something away. Right. And when it's easy to put something away and, you know, you can open a drawer and put it in and, and it closes all the way and it doesn't, the drawer doesn't fall out and, you know, all that kind of stuff. People, <laughs> people and I'm talking about children <laughs> and often husbands will actually put <laughs> things away. And, um, and so that's the goal. You want to make yourself into, um, yeah, what you don't want to make yourself into, what is it? Indispensable. You want to make yourself dispensable. You don't want to be the only one putting things away. So you want people to know exactly where it is, how easy it is to do and encourage them to do it because chances are you're not living by yourself. If you're living by yourself, be my guest. Yeah, you know, whatever you want. You're going to feel better <laughs> if it's nice, um, and uh, and you have nobody to like blame it on. <laughs> but if you show people in your family, you know that you can keep things nice and that they can too, because you'll help them declutter and organize and all of that. Then you're turning them into people you'll want to live with, and right. that people will live with them. Um, and that's the best gift you can give people because you may love your spouse but and I'll tell you my friend Sandy Sandy if you're watching this I'm ratting you out <laughs> he's a guy 
He probably won't watch this. Um, hey. <laughs> he, he is a fabulous person. He's got ADHD. He'll, you know, it just does. And Sandy is like Felix Unger. Uh, not Felix. Is like is like uh, Oscar Madison in The Odd Couple, if you guys yeah. know. Yeah, uh, yeah. His girlfriend, Susie, is Felix Unger. He spends his weekends with her, but he comes home um, to his little tiny apartment uh, during the week because they can't live together because he doesn't feel comfortable in her extremely tidy house. She, she's never going to watch this, I hope. <laughs> I was at Susie's house. <laughs> I should have thought about this before I started. I was at her house, not said anything. I was at her house. And I'm sitting at the counter and it's beautiful and there's no clutter anywhere and everything's lovely and I'm drinking water. And every time I pick up the water and there's water, it was a marble counter. So it wasn't like I needed a coaster or something. Yeah. Every time I picked up my water to drink, she was with the rag and wiped the water. Oh, wow. She and meant business. Somebody, and if somebody's neat like that, which I am not, so um, you don't feel that comfortable. Like you feel like you can't, it's not a Let home, it's a museum. Or put anything down or something. And that's what she needs. And she's got beautiful things. And, um, you know, she's got a lovely life and lives in a beautiful place. And everybody would want to be her. Right. But Sandy is not that. And he just, he can suck it up for a while. And then he has to go home and just be himself. <laughs> yeah. um, which is the extreme opposite um, it was better when I was uh, when I was uh, his assistant at some point. I was working with him, and um, uh, and I would take care of a lot of stuff. But so you don't have, want to be like that, and you don't want to be like this. There's a happy medium um, where everybody can feel comfortable. But if you can develop these uh, skills in yourself, teach them to your kids. The uh, overflow or the residual effect will be that you're influencing people around you too. Right. And so, um, and so that will help. Also, you know, cleaning up, tidying up, organizing, decluttering, whatever. It's a lonely business, you know? That's why I had my friend come when I was cleaning my room. Um, why I'm on the phone with people when I'm doing the kitchen. You know, my kitchen only gets really, really clean when I'm on the phone. And I'm having the big, long conversation like, parents used to have when they're just sitting there. I can't sit there and have a long conversation with somebody for an hour. I have right. to be busy doing it. My husband comes comes to me sometimes and he goes, don't you have to call anybody today? Because <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen isn't being clean the way, <laughs> the way it gets when I'm on the phone. Oh, that's funny. But it's true. I'm, and yeah. I have a chapter in my book, we call it eating a plum. My friends and I, there's a story about that. But basically, it's like somebody keeping you company while you have to do the stuff that is otherwise a thankless task. You know, it sucks. Sorry. Right. Just, right. No, that's like so this. true. And um, but if you have somebody with you, just making you laugh, like you open a cabinet, and you're like, what the heck is this in here for? And right. you're like, it up and they start laughing with you because it's so ridiculous right and you know that just makes it better especially if you have to like clean out your parents house you know that part of what my book is about clearing out uh parents house when they you know pass or they move into assisted living or something like that and you're it's the most emotional thing because you're going through your entire childhood your entire life not just childhood but it's often your childhood home and um and people are paralyzed and they can't do it and a lot of times they're dealing with grief and they're mm -hmm. trying to do this. So, you know, if you have somebody with you doing it, then it makes it a whole lot easier um, and you can get it done. And then remember, you know, pay it forward and, and do it with somebody else or do it with your friend, you know, trade off. Yeah. Um, because doing it is much better when you've got somebody else to keep you accountable. Also, you know, you say you have this goal if you've got somebody there with you, you're making the time that minute to do it. You're mm -hmm. like, no, we're not going to lunch. No, we're not doing this. We're going to have a glass of wine when I finish this cabinet. And then I'll pour another one when we finish that cabinet. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's like you you can make it into a social occasion, but it keeps you going, you know? Right. And that makes so much sense. 
because given your own devices, you're just not going to do it. You know, during the pandemic, I'm in Los Angeles. We were locked down longer than anybody. Our kids didn't get to go to real school in person for two years, I think. Oh, my Something gosh. Like that. It was. Um, and and so everybody was home. I mean, you have kids, you're home. You have to be. You have plenty of time. You're there. Are you really um, going to tell me you didn't have time to organize? To <laughs> decode, organize? Of course you had the time if you were going to make the time. Mm -hmm. But two things. One is people become clutter blind. They just don't look at what they have. They pass by it so long they don't even know it's there. When I first walk into somebody's house and I say, is there a reason this is there? Because my eye immediately goes to things that are out of place. I said, is there a reason this is here? Not judgmental. I just want to understand mm -hmm. like, how they live or why it's there. Sometimes there's really good reasons. You know, um, you know, I keep people keep like little screwdrivers there because, um, you know, they always have to open a battery compartment or something. And so screwdrivers in an unlikely place or, um, you know, or something, you know, whatever. People have reasons for things being in places you wouldn't expect. But sometimes it's just there because it's there. It got put there, you know, 10 years ago and nobody <laughs> thought about it. You just step over it and you move on. You know, right. and um, so I tell everybody, you know, people always say, oh, especially men. Oh, you're going to make me throw out all my stuff when when a professional organizer comes in. I'm like, no, I'm going to make you look at all your stuff and then you're going to decide what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I will help you. Um, but so the first thing is like looking at it. So a lot of people just don't see their stuff anymore. They don't see the clutter and it takes a fresh pair of eyes to like address it and then. Most of it, by that time, you don't need it at all because you never even knew it was there. Right. Second thing is, is that it's just too overwhelming and they don't want to deal with it because, again, it brings up those those emotions. And that's why a lot of people just didn't do it during the pandemic. It was just, you know, it was you're already stressed, depressed, anxious because of, of uh, the pandemic. And now that's the least thing you want to do, even though you have all the time. So when people say, I don't have time, it's probably not true. Mm -hmm. It's probably just one of those terrible tasks that nobody wants to do by themselves, you know, and they find everything else to do instead of it because somebody needs to sit with them for moral support and do it. So the nicest thing you can do for anybody is that. And when you do that for somebody, don't hold up things. It's like, you don't need this. You know, don't make judgments of what they need or not. You're just sitting with them so that they can, you know, if they ask your opinion, you can say something, but don't make judgments on other people's things. You take care of your own stuff. People always tell me when I go to their houses, my husband's a hoarder, you know, and they, they complain because their husband's office is a mess, you know, or whatever it is. He keeps bringing home all these things. And it could be true that he just collects all kinds of right. what we can see junk you know or whatever and it bothers us because it doesn't look nice well because it doesn't mean anything to us right but everybody can have their own space where they can have whatever they want you know so you take care of your own i call it you stay on your own side of the street mm -hmm. you keep your own side of the street clean they and give them a space where they can have where they where you can say nothing about whatever they've got you know Everybody needs their own space where they nobody has a say in anything else. But in shared spaces, in living spaces or whatever, you need to work together and keep it nice because it's not just for the way it looks, it's for your mental health. Yeah. And it proves it. So um in line when you were talking about the parents, you know, and the parents passing or whatever, what about a spouse passing? Is that in your book too? Like, um, to I have gone to my mom's and I'm not telling her to get rid of any of my dad's yeah. stuff. I would never. Um, but you know, we, my dad would want maybe some, uh, the paralyzed vets or somebody to get maybe his shoes or, right. you know, um, and we've suggested that. And yes, that's a good idea, you know, and I don't want to push, but I feel like maybe it's a constant reminder every time she opens the closet. So to me, right. I'm trying to protect her, like, let's get this out of here. But for right. her, it's a comfort too. So do you have an opinion about? So it depends. It depends on where they're at in their grieving. You know, um, a lot of times they're ready. They just, or at least they're ready to give up a lot of stuff. I mean, you don't need that much to remind you of 
somebody's life, you know, mm -hmm. when my father died, my um, stepmother made pillows for my sisters and I mm -hmm. that out of clothes of my dad's like, I did and, that with a blanket. Yeah. And, um, and so we have that actually, though it doesn't go with anything in my house. So I actually have a different pillow cover on it that does go, but I know that that's under there. Oh, that's a good idea. Stuff. Yeah. Um, so, but a lot of times people are ready to get a lot of things out, especially if they want other people, relatives or, or whatever to be able to use it. Right. Um, they just are overwhelmed on how that works. So you could say something like, you know, hey, mom, I read that um, Vietnam Veterans of America um, has this pickup service and you just go on to the website, which is true. I'm telling you now this is a tip. No, I know that. Um, pick up please it's called pick up please you can write dot org dot com wherever it is you can and you can schedule these pickups and they come and what you could do is schedule one like say once a month and say mom um i scheduled it you know because uh there's some stuff that i that you know i think we can get rid of this you know whatever whatever not of your dad's but other stuff of hers you know whatever towels you know what mm -hmm. something generic okay that doesn't have an emotion attached and then um and so if there's anything that you might um want to pass on from dad you know are you ready to pass on from dad you know they're coming on you know tuesday at okay five right and and then you've made it an easy way that she doesn't have to think about and all she has to do is put it in the box that you just now mm -hmm. have made to do so you're not pushing her it's like if there's anything you want and then you just regularly schedule these things and little okay. by little, by little she can do it also though make sure you go through all the pockets yes you know? yes people, people um a generation above us i guess um we're big on hiding money everywhere so you never want to give away a desk without checking all the drawers and underneath all the drawers special compartments um beds um pockets you know, almost anything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. open it and check it and make sure there's no money or something in it. Yeah. While I'm speaking of money, though, decluttering is a great way to make money because I tell people you will always find money when you organize. And it's never not happened in 20 something years of me doing it professionally. <laughs> people will always find money and sometimes significantly. Oh, so, isn't that something? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> whether it's money or bonds or, um, <clears throat> or a, a uncashed check or you know what I mean it's like there's got to be something um that you can always find. so you know if if you need some sort of incentive there it is um, <laughs> so, I love it. But, that's, but that's but you you can't ever rush anybody in getting rid of some of these things but you can make it easier for them to do it um by showing them how because it's so overwhelming to think of you know, it going out the door than to think of actually having to call somebody to take it away from you or right. whatever it is. Yes, that's it's true. Really and then you offer, you know, it's like, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, go through dad's shoes, some people have a thing where you don't give away dead people's shoes. So oh. that might be a cultural thing. Seriously. Um, wasn't with me. I got fabulous boots for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> My mom was a thrift store shopper, like you wouldn't believe. She not only didn't throw any away anything that we ever wore, um, so my entire childhood and 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 young adulthood, whatever, was always in her closet at any time in every size. And she went thrift shopping for only the best stuff. So getting rid of all her clothes was a kind of a pleasure. My uh, and um, except for the square dance dresses, those were like, what do you do? <laughs> All the petticoats. Anyway, but the point is, um, yeah, you have to go through everything. Don't give don't give um, clothes away without checking every pocket yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't know, here's another tip. People are like, I don't want to give junk to them. You don't want to, you know, my friend used to do community service working at Goodwill, and they told me about all the junk that people give. But guess what? They also have textile recycling at Goodwill. So mm -hmm. even if you give them junk clothes, they know what to do with it. They 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 get money for recycling textiles. Yeah. So I don't feel bad about giving any, I mean, it's controversial. I don't feel bad about giving away any clothes in any condition because I know if it's not sellable, they can throw it in the, um, in, if it's Goodwill because they're a big enough operation. Right. They can, they can uh, uh, 
put it in the textile recycling. I remember so, Googling that, what will Goodwill take and not take. And I remember being so shocked that they would take eyeglasses. They would take one shoe. So if you didn't yeah. have a pair and you could only find one. Well, yeah. Again, again, it's regional. I mean, sometimes it's by area. So you always have to ask when you're dropping things off, what are you taking now? Like during the pandemic, there was they were overloaded. Right? Oh my gosh. Some yeah. People actually were decluttering. Yeah. So they were, so they were overloaded and there was a lot of stuff they wouldn't take anymore. And now they're taking again. Um, but like books, they still take VCR tapes, which shocks oh, me. Funny, yeah. Um, and I think cassettes, although I haven't asked them about that lately. Um, and you know, all kinds of well, all kinds of stuff. So but in general, with other items, not textiles, but with other items, if you wouldn't um, loan it to somebody or give it to somebody that you know, that if it's too dirty or gross or whatever, broken, that kind of stuff, no, that's yeah, garbage. Right. But for textiles, they have textile recycling, so you don't have to worry about that. That's awesome. Donna, you are a wealth of information. No one could ever accuse you of gatekeeping anything. <laughs> Hey, I keep great. it all day, but I also have a, a Facebook group. So now's the now comes the plugs. Okay, yes, first of all, promote, promote. My website is neatlyarranged.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, neatly arranged uh org, uh, I guess is the way it's written. Um, on Facebook, but I have a Facebook group that more happens in there. Um, and it's called This Mess is Making Me Stress. So um, it's a private group only that once you're in, I don't want people broadcasting like details of you can't believe what, you know, her house looks like if you posted pictures or something. Sure, like that. sure. I don't ever take before and after pictures because anybody's house can look like it before. And, you know, and th because if it, even if it was nice, you mess it up, it looks like it before you fix it up. It's people like to though show their progress. So, OK, fine. But, you know, that kind of thing. So it's private. But all you have to do is ask me and um, and tell me where you saw me. And you're in, and we hope that you agree to the rules that you're not going right, to right. share with everybody else. But, um, but I always put all my advice. There's so many decluttering groups on, on Facebook and I've joined a lot of them. Um, and the pe same people, I mean, the people ask the same questions over and over and over again. Anyway, when there's something that I have more specialized, a, a better answer than other people just mm -hmm. give me the answers. I will post and then I'll take that and put it into my Facebook group, that answer. So people can just like benefit from whatever I just said. Um, but all of my podcast episodes that I've been a guest on are also on my website. You can watch me. Um, and um, as long as you watch this too, because this is where that's going to go to. <laughs> um, if you're on YouTube, any, anything that's video that's actually put on YouTube will also be, I have a playlist um, on Spotify and a playlist on YouTube and anything I've ever been on is in that playlist. And so get if your you book, wanna, show your book. Oh yeah. And if you want to, so if you want to listen while you're decluttering, because that's the best way to keep you motivated and interested yes. in TV, is to, to listen to somebody. This is it again. This mess is making me stress. I it's love it. on Amazon and everywhere else. Um, but it's cheapest on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody who buys it, if you then email me um, and go to my website and there's a way to, to contact me, just tell me what the very last sentence of the book is so that I know that you read it. And, um, and then you'll get uh, a free hour. Just me talking to you, telling you whatever. You're oh struggling. my goodness. My advice, you could, if we're face to face um, you, and you have a laptop you, or your phone, you want to show me around and say, this is my problem. What should I do? You know, you get an hour with me. So. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. That's if, great. If this wasn't enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then the new book hopefully will be out. I keep saying that, but I got derailed when I broke my wrist. Um, the new book is This Move is Making Me Stress. And I uh, think that's a great idea. And it's about, it's about move, uh, you know, everything to do about moving, selling your house, like that, all that overwhelmingness, um, how to pack when you're still showing your house. Uh, people are like, how do I pack when my house is still right. you know, be nice all the time? Staged. All that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And um, and then moving in and how to set up a new house and how to pick a, um, a the right place to, to go when uh, with aging parents who um, need to go to assisted living or boarding care or 
you know, whatever, and then what to do with all of their stuff, how to get them to downsize, to bring to their new place, how to set up their new room, all of that stuff. You know, um, a lot of people declutter, but but um, not everybody's going to give you the the scoop on how to do all this other related stuff that is still extremely stressful, but it all starts with decluttering. So yeah, uh, declutter, decluttering, organizing, moving. I'm your friend. And if you're in Los Angeles, I'm available. I actually still come into people's homes. Um, that's less now because, you know, the pandemic destroyed our, <laughs> destroyed yeah. our business. Right. Um, but I can virtually consult anywhere for, you know, um, I have a, a, a way to do it. Like, even so, even if after your first hour, if you want more, there's, there's me. Um, and uh, that's it. So thank All you right. so much. <laughs> Donna, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet you. I loved all of your tips. That was all just wonderful. That was great. I can't wait to air this. So uh, we will be in touch. Okay. All thank right. So thanks. Bye-bye. Okay.